My name is Miguel Angel Martinez, and I am a student at Monroe Community College. I am here today to speak to you about updating the English 250 online course content. Our purpose here today is to speak about in finding a form or a way to increase the retention rates of this course's online version. Now, before we go any further, let's talk a little bit about the course. This course is based on speaking, listening, and writing in terms of professional communications. There are various forms of communication which are utilized in this course. One of the forms of communication is emailing. Others are memos, informal and formal proposals, and last but not least, there's also presentations. These are all various learning tools that are utilized in this course. And I will be analyzing these different learning tools and forms of communication in this course. The first form of communication is discussion threads. Discussion threads are used in many courses, and it is often the first form of communication that professors rely on in terms of assignments. A benefit of discussion threads is that they allow professors to post a question and students to reply to this question. On the downside, discussion threads do not allow for a free flow of information. It breaks the lines of communication. Students have to go from thread to thread trying to find which person said what and what information might be more valuable than other information. There's also emailing. Emails are utilized by professors in online course content at all times. Emailing is beneficial because it allows the professors to get in contact with the students and the students to get in contact with other students as well. The downside to emailing is that in this fast-paced world we live in, it's become known as the new snail mail method. And it doesn't allow the students the hasty feedback or the expedient feedback that they need in terms of course content or a due dates or any updates. There's also open forum questions in which students can ask any question and in this course specifically it is called the Ask a Question discussion group. It is formed the same way as a thread. Students are able to express all of their ideas in here, but it doesn't allow for a continual flow of information. There's also text messaging. Text messaging is becoming a very well-known and more often used form of communication in the business world. The main problem with text messaging is that it doesn't have a reliable source of permanence. Text messaging will get you the information you need in a faster way and in this world everyone is constantly checking their Facebook updates, their text messages, um, their emails, and in doing so, it sort of creates a guarantee that your information will be read or at least received. There's also instant messaging. Instant messaging is used at my workplace. I work at the University of Rochester. The corporate staff and faculty, as well as those holding managerial positions, use instant messaging as a means of communication when they need to get information flowing faster, or when they need a quick answer, or when they can resolve something in a two to three minute process, as opposed to emailing, which would take longer for them to get back. Now. These are the different forms of communication 
and these are the forms that I am analyzing as the course content. Now, there is a Professor Doug Madden at the University of Hawaii, Honolulu Community College. He conducted a study in which he outlined the 17 good elements for online courses. Of these 17 elements, there were three that I wanted to focus on in this to address this problem. We need to have an online course in which students are able to have ease of access to material. They are able to easily and readily communicate with their instructors. And they're also able to speak to the class as a whole. In conjunction with Honolulu Community College, I also looked up a survey that was taken by the University of West Georgia. The University of West Georgia had the priority survey for online learners, and they focused on the faculty providing timely feedback, the quality of online instruction, as well as the responsiveness of these instructors. These were the three top criteria that the students held in highest regards. And using the survey from, what, from University of West Georgia, as well as the 17 elements, I have come up with a solution to our problem in timely feedback, in timely feedback in the quality of online instruction and it, this will allow students to receive feedback from their instructors when they need it. Implementing chat group sessions to the online course content. As I said, it will allow for timely feedback. There will be communication between the professor and the class as a whole. This will allow for students to communicate their ideas in a forum which will be similar to that of an in-class learning environment. But these chat group sessions, I believe, should not be graded or kept to a certain time. Allowing it to be a non-graded supplement as well as a supplement that is not going to be held down to a certain time gives students the freedom of accessing or joining these group sessions when they have the chance. These students are joining online classes because they need the flexibility. They are not able to make it to class at certain times every single day. Now to ensure that this implementation of the chat group sessions will go through smoothly, I have a checks and balances in place. The first is the feedback. The feedback that the students provide the professors with. The professors will use this feedback to verify that they are using their course content and the resources available to them the best they can. After verifying, if they ever find a need to make any adjustments, they can do so. The students will give the instructors feedback, and the instructors feedback to the students will therefore create a cycle. It will allow the students to feel as though they have a choice or a voice in terms of what can happen in this course. In adjusting the course content, we want to make sure that we keep it up to date. Allowing the content to, keep, to stay up to date will allow students to be able to make a connection between the course content and real life. Now we've got the checks and balances, but we also need to make sure that the execution is a flawless one. In terms of scheduling, I, after approval, I would like to have this implemented by the fall of 2013 semester. The Angel online learning system that Monroe Community College utilizes for their online courses already has the capability of access.
accessing instant messaging or creating these chat group sessions. In regards to staffing, there will be no need to hire new instructors. The instructors that Monroe Community College already has teaching these online courses are trained in these online courses. There will also be no need for outsourcing. So, seeing as these two criteria are already met by Monroe Community College's Angel Online Learning System, there will be no cost to Monroe Community College. This is a recommendation and a proposal that will come at no cost to the university. Now, let's just go over a couple of things that we've discussed today. We've gone through the course content. We analyzed some course content and went through my chat group sessions to see the benefits and some deficits. The way to find out if there are any deficits in this would be to use the checks and balances. The key here is to make sure that we can increase the retention rates for this online English 250 professional communications course. As for its execution, we can see it is short and simple and it gives the instructors enough time to make sure that they are up to date with all of the content that Angel Online Learning System has to offer. Now, any questions? Yes, ma'am? Do you think the chat room should always be monitored by an instructor? In terms of the instructor always monitoring the chat rooms, I don't believe it'll be a necessity, but it'll be an added benefit. It'll allow the students to have the feedback they need at the time they need it with these instructors. If the students ever need to get into a chat group session and the instructor is not available, they may also just start up their own chat group sessions. Yes, sir? Have you thought about using video chat instead of a chat room? I've thought about using video chat. Now, here's the problem with that. Video chats do not allow multiple students to go online at once. If we have a class of 25 students, those 25 students will not be able to benefit from this all at once. The professor would then have to split up their sessions. If you use Skype, I believe you can get up to three to four people on a group session, on a video group session. But when you need the class to discuss everything as a whole, this it just doesn't seem like something beneficial. Okay, and th I hope that you can see the added benefits of implementing chat group sessions to the online course content. Thank you.